time at noon, and I'm Pastor McCullough, and I come to you with great excitement and passion, talking about the subject of holy following God. And today we're going to talk about the language of believers. Now we've already discussed what the language of an unbeliever sounds like. Now we're going to look at the, the sound, the body language, the verbal language of a believer. Okay? And I'm coming from Numbers 14, 6 through 8. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jeth Jethune, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. Hear the language, it's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. So far the word. Now, what kind of attitude makes a person a believer? The first thing is Caleb was grieved at the language of the unbeliever. When you're a believer, you become totally intolerant when you hear negativism. If God has given you a, a project, he's given you a, a vision, and you people start talking negatively in your ear, bringing up the impossibility of this coming to fruition, all of a sudden you become very, very intolerant. You become frustrated. I want you to understand why you're frustrated. You're not frustrated because you hate the person. You're not frustrated because you know you think you're superior to the person. You're frustrated because it's going against something. It's, 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 it's trying to erode at your faith. Okay, so listen to how demonstrative Caleb was. He rent his clothes. It, he took off his, the upper garment, he rented it, especially close to the area of his heart. It's a Hebrew custom which signifies heartfelt and grievous affliction. Just like when Job got the, the word that he lost everything, the Bible said he, he took off his clothes and put on sackcloth and just you know got down in ashes. The, the Hebrews are very demonstrative people when they're expressing pain or joy. So, so Caleb was grieved. What was he grieved? Not because he didn't like the other guys, but because they were constantly spewing out words that were negative, opposing the will of God, opposing the purpose of God. They were saying things that were opposite to what God said. And a believer becomes very, very irritated when they hear it. The, they verbally agree with God. When you're a believer, you verbally agree with God. You do not suggest any alternatives. And sometimes we're very subtle in our opposition. We don't come out and say, no, God. We just say, well, God, could it be? Could it be so-and-so? Or what do you think about so-and-so? There's no think or thought. There's no other plan. Listen to what they said. They boldly said, in the face of the majority in the face of opposition, the land is good. The, the, the opposer said, the land will swallow us, up, swallow us up. Look at the opposition. The land is going to eat us up. It's going to devour us. We're going to be destroyed. Here comes Caleb, an unbeliever, standing only with Joshua, two against ten, and a congregation. The land is good. So you have to stand up in the midst of opposition and reaffirm yourself with what God says. If you don't do it, you'll go under. And somebody's going under right out there today because you're listening to conflicting views. Too many people are, are, are distracting you. Get away. Go in the room by yourself. Take a walk. Drive in your car and rehearse what God said. Get your faith back intact with the word of God. They challenge the unbelieving hearts. Now sometimes you have to turn around and speak to those spirits. And speak to those people. And say to them, this is not what God is saying. Sometimes you can't be silent. Because you know, unbelieving spirits, they can become contagious. And they don't give up so easily. They're just constantly gnaw at you. Oh, 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 you're going to still do that? Oh, uh, I, I don't think that's going to work. And then they call you next day. Where are you today? Are you still doing that? Are you still believing that? And next thing you know, they're weakening you. or they, they're, they're, they're eroding away at your faith and at your belief system. And here's a scriptural lesson, uh, a scriptural proof rather, that he spoke out against it. 
In Numbers 14 and 8, he says, If the Lord delight in us, he will what? bring us into the land. He will bring us into the land. You get the language? We're not just going up there alone. He's going to bring us into the land. You have to turn around and speak the word of the Lord against the enemy. Remember when Jesus was in the wilderness of temptation. He did not keep his mouth shut. You're too mute. Take, come off the mute mode. You're listening and not saying. You're listening and not saying. Now the brain is taking all of that in and, come, and, 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 and putting it in a file. In order to delete that file, you have to turn around and say what God said. It is a good land. And we're going in to possess it. All right? So Caleb and Joshua were saying, if you change your attitude and believe in God, he will take pleasure in your behavior. What brings, what brings delight to God? You know, we think that working in a church or being busy or being a good preacher or a teacher really brings delight to God. No, it does not. You can do all of that and still be an atheist, a functional atheist. You can preach a good message and still have no belief system in God. Many professors in theological institutions teach from this Bible and don't believe the Bible. So God is not impressed with works. He's impressed with how much you believe him for who he says he is. Am I a savior? Yes. Am I a healer? Yes. Am I the Messiah? Yes. Do I make a way? Yes. Do I lie? No. Once you begin to believe God on that level, even when the storm comes, you can make it. So Caleb and Joshua challenged them. You can't talk negative and receive the positive from the Lord. You can't keep saying, I don't believe God, and then expect a miracle. That's schizophrenia. You'll be out of your mind. You can't keep coming to church, hearing the word, and then leave and do your own thing. You will be tormented. And many saints are tormented because they hear the word, they still come to church, and they go out and do their own thing. You're not going to be happy. You're not going to be free. You can't have that much information and then work against it. The enemy will play with your mind. That alone will cause you to be miserable. So I want you to hold on to your language. I'm healed by his stripes. The Lord told me to wait on him, and he'll strengthen my heart. The Lord said, make the telephone call, and the connection will be made. The Lord says, don't close the door to the church. Don't give up on that church. I'm talking to a pastor. Don't give up on that church. Don't close the door. Don't quit. I want to come through for you. Let's look at the reflection corner. Listen to your own language when you speak about God. Listen to yourself. Maybe you should take a tape recorder or record what you're saying when you're angry. And you'll hear the language of an unbeliever. Are you using the language of victory or the language of defeat? Is your attitude that of a skeptic or that of a Christian sold out for God? We've got too many skeptics. And let me say this. You may not even believe that you're a skeptic. You've done it all your life. You were raised in a house of negative uh, talkers. You were raised in a house of people who went to church but talk negative with fear and anxiety. And you don't even know that you've taken on that spirit. So listen to yourself or ask someone to listen to you. Begin rehearsing the promises of God and recite scripture to assure you of his faithfulness when all looks hopeless. Remember, if he spake it, he will bring it to pass. You're not dealing with a hustler, a con artist, a manipulator, or a capricious God. You're not, he's not like the mythological gods of the, of the Greek, Greek Empire. No, he is a true, living, and wise God. Unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's who you're dealing with, so you can trust it. Close your eyes and go to sleep. Wake up in the morning and speak exactly what he said. If he said it 10 years ago, say it again another day. This might be the day of complete deliverance. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Precious time at noon.